How do I look? Exceptionally ordinary. Some actors just desperately care about their character's appearance, and some just really want to break stereotypes. Whatever it may be, it always seems like the best choice in the end. We've dug into the smallest places to find some of the best moments an actor drastically changed their appearances for films and TV shows. Side note, we're covering a lot of Harry Potter throughout. Time to play dress up with our favorite characters. Number 1. Jason Isaacs played one of the most vile Harry Potter characters. And his initial wardrobe idea didn't really reflect that. Ridiculous. The original concept was to have Lucius Malfoy dressed in a pinstripe suit and have black and white short hair. Doesn't really scream evil, but luckily he spoke up to director Chris Columbus. There's no way he would cut his hair like a muggle or dress like a muggle. He demanded his character wear a straight black costume with long white hair. This combo became iconic throughout all eight films. But Isaac's demands were not yet finished. On top of the initial changes, he asked for a cane to show the character's power and wealth. The snake on top with a pull-out wand? Well, we think that was just good research on his end. Number 2. Next up is one of our favorite witches from the Harry Potter franchise, Bellatrix Lestrange. The awful estranged cousin of Sirius Black made serious changes to her dress. I also had great fun creating her, the look of her. Helena Bonham Carter was, least to say, unenthusiastic about the outfit she was given. She wanted Bellatrix to have a glamorous aspect to her, while still reflecting her time in Azkaban. There's a dilapidated quality to her, in the way that she was once intensely glamorous. Costume designer Janie Tameen agreed with Carter and agreed that she was born to be in a corset. That's about the only thing we can agree on from Bellatrix. Number 3. We're taking a small break from the wizarding world and jumping into some Marvel heroes. Starting it off with Elizabeth Olsen, the powerful Scarlet Witch. Most of the actors in the MCU were not thrilled with their outfits, but at least they got to cover up. Olsen always had an issue with being the most outfit-revealing character on the team. For WandaVision, she got to make the choice of how her outfit looked, and took full advantage in covering up. But it really helped with moving around the action sequences. I totally fell. <laughs> Number 4. I. Am. Not wearing this helmet. We were shocked to see Robert Downey Jr. drop this burn on his Iron Man costume. Hey Robert, would you mind putting on that helmet? No? Yes? No. <laughs> Downey's opinion about his helmet started from the very moment he put it on. Having a real helmet and suit proved to be impractical for him and his comfort zone. He demanded that his suit be replaced with CGI, a very expensive option that producers were trying to avoid. When dealing with such a big star and symbol of the MCU, you gotta give in when it comes to their comfortability. He's not wrong for refusing to put on the helmet that nearly blinded him on set. Like I could, I was absolutely blinded. That just sounds like a disaster waiting to happen. Filmmakers gave in to Downey's commands for a few projects, but once it came time for Tony Stark to assemble with the Avengers, they asked him one more time. <laughs> put two dots here and then you can paint it in later. Yeah. Number 5. Florence Pugh blasted into the Hawkeye series midway through and blessed us with her grand fashion sense. I like your vest. God, I knew it. I knew you did. It's so cool, right? After her big reveal, Pew's Yelena walked through the Big Apple with a very prominent fur coat. This was not a decision made by costume designers, but of Florence's own instinct. What? This is crazy. And for a very odd reason, Pew decided that looking like a pirate while eating mac and cheese would just be too hilarious to miss out on. Number 6. Oh, Timothy Chalamet, you've given us some great performances over the years, but your character's fashion picks are just all too noticeable for us to look away. I like to buy these sunglasses. We get a couple scenes with Chalamet and Netflix's Don't Look Up, a movie that pulls the Midwest out of his character through his wardrobe, and him not wanting to wear the same clothes from previous films. He had an idea. He thought his character would fit better in a mullet. Well, kind of obsessed over it. Number 7. We know this one will be a fan favorite. We're showing you Samuel Jackson's argument over his lightsaber, but we won't force his opinion on you. I'm like the second baddest Jedi in the universe next to Yoda. 
Jackson had a verbal duel with Star Wars director George Lucas over his lightsaber color. Lucas refused and said Mace Windu would not, like any Jedi or Sith, have a purple colored lightsaber. Samuel thought it would bring out Windu's image in the Clone Wars to let his character stand out. So um, I could find myself in that big fight scene in the middle of that, you know. <laughs> but Windu's knowledge of the Force was extensive. And who's to say he didn't play a little Jedi mind trick on him to finally give in? Number 8. Emma Watson has proved to us time and time again of her heroicness. And this time she made a statement that everyone needed to hear about Belle. She's a lesson in persistence and grit. For her role in Disney's Beauty and the Beast, her character's wardrobe was modeled after the original cartoon, but slim waists and tight corsets were not a part of the way she wanted to embody the role. So she had costume designers make a few changes to her outfits. We went through a long design process where we tried different looks. With her concerns over portraying unhealthy images of the body and just really needing to move during scenes, filmmakers were more than happy to oblige. Number 9. Bryce Dallas Howard's wardrobe change during Jurassic World is yet another reason why actors and actresses need to comfortably move around. Of course it's illogical for her to be in heels in the jungle. She caused shockwaves in cinemas for running away from hungry dinosaurs in high heels. She showed skill doing so, but this was no sacrifice for her. She was given the choice by filmmakers to either wear heels or no shoes at all. Sequel writers actually wrote out the heels and gave her some comfy shoes instead. Dallas soulfully agreed. Hashtag no heels 2018. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah. boy. Number 10. Cobra Kai would be nothing without the legendary Johnny Lawrence and William Zapka's love for the Rock Tees. You like Speedwagon? What kind of man doesn't? Zapka had a big issue with some of the t-shirts he was given from costume designer Frank Helmer. They didn't match any of the bands his character would like. This authentic and limited selection was tough to find, but Helmer demanded that they would not be used in every scene. Number 11. HBO's Euphoria is known to have some of the best outfits for its characters. Hunter Schaefer plays Jules on the show, and oh, does she know how to pick cool outfits. Thank you. I don't really feel it, but, you know. It doesn't hurt that Schaefer is a professional model, making her an excellent choice to consult about her wardrobe. Costume designer Heidi Bivens explained how the process worked. She had very specific ideas about what could work for Jules, so she would DM me any ideas and I picked up the ball and ran with it. Number 12. It wasn't only Schaefer that Bivens entrusted with wardrobe choices. Star of the show Zoe Zendaya was always allowed to have input on her costumes. Well, I'll get a, a little boy's tux. So that's what we did. She not only gave her opinion on her character's look, but Zendaya gave Bivens the suggestion to have Rue wear little boy Hanes tops in episode 7. Rue would never care about what she wore, so this pretty much worked with the scene as a whole. I feel amazing. <laughs> Number 13. All right, now we're heading back to Harry Potter. It's Ivana Lynch's turn. First you had your own ideas about what you wanted to wear. Lynch worked on that iconic headdress from Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince on her own at the bequest of costume designer Jani Tamim. She wanted to take full control of Luna's awesome bizarreness in the most Luna way possible. If it was not for Luna, you will have made it better than that? Perhaps. <laughs> Number 14. Even Alan Rickman hopped on the costume change train, having demanded that his costume be the most fitting for his character. I said the sleeves should be really tight and there should be a lot of buttons. The many buttons and tight sleeves Rickman wanted for Snape was quite possibly a weird request for the wardrobe department. Yes. He was very involved in the costumes for his character, but it really did work out in the end and gave a much needed break for the costume designers. Number 15. This instance of a costume change was actually definitely needed. A young Daniel Radcliffe underwent a pretty painful experience for this one. I'm over it now. We all know J.K. Rowling had a very big say in what was done in the Harry Potter films, so even the little details had to be included. That meant Harry's eyes had to be green, so contacts were the only solution. The only really important thing is that his eyes look like his mother's eyes. Unfortunately for him, they were extremely painful. However, filmmakers decided in the end that it was best to just throw out the lenses. Number 16. Tom Hiddleston wasn't much of a costume changer during his time on Loki. He doesn't even have his clothes or his magical powers. The initial idea was to have Loki in his original costumes from Avengers, but Tom had different ideas. He wanted to blend his character in with that 50s TVA style. 
it sort of is a mirror for himself. Number 17. Our last Harry Potter actress was actually very involved with her costume, and it seems designers had big trust in her for her character's looks. Bonnie Wright had many accessories in mind for Ginny. Her mother was a jeweler, so it probably saved production on additional expenses. Number 18. Jason Bateman is just a different actor, always wearing the same shoes. It's just, it's just like, a, like a nice old pair of shoes. <laughs> this one is so slight that we may not have even seen it. Had it not been in every project he's worked on, Bateman's signature New Balance sneakers can be spotted everywhere he goes. And we're sure he has to demand that they be a part of his wardrobe every time. Number 19. Timothy really shows us time and time again that he can dress to impress. Not expecting that, very random. Really? But thank you. Great style. Once he was cast in Little Women, he was basically entrusted with putting his clothes together for the day. Could we maybe see him working in the wardrobe department someday? Number 20. We remember binge watching Netflix's Queen's Gambit and loving every second that Anya Taylor Joy was on screen. <laughs> Her outfits changed over the course of the miniseries, a change that was guided by Joy herself for Beth's character. It became a ping pong relationship between her and the costume designer. Seeing how these artists work together in tailoring their own outfits was definitely interesting. We never knew that an actor really ever had any say in the costuming process. Did you disagree with any of the final costuming decisions? Leave a comment below.